Welcome to Infinite Chains. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Infinite Chains podcast. Uh, we've got another fun one today. I'm joined by Sydney. Hey, Sydney. Hey, how's it going? All right. So, uh, so uh, if this is your first time listening, I'm Jack O'Haller, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Scale Labs. And we are here with Sydney, who is uh, in communicate friends commu or in communications at Scale. Yeah, so, uh, doing all the weekly roundups for you guys. <laughs> yeah, most of you who are following Scale on Twitter, you know know Sydney, but she's going to be joining me um, for the Scale uh, Infinite Chains podcast and and bringing her perspective and knowledge to these podcasts now. Um, here we are today. We've got an awesome guest, somebody I've known for a while and and um, somebody who's been building in the space. I think a lot of people have gotten into the, the space and kind of come and go. But Tim is uh, somebody who I would say is one of the uh, leading experts of all of my network in blockchain gaming of anybody I know in the space. And Tim Tello, who's the COO of Pocket Full Quarters. Hi, Tim. Hey, uh, you know, that was <laughs> very, very flattering. Um, I'm happy to be here. Glad to be here. Yeah. Now, Tim, um, we'll get into this maybe later, but if not, we should talk about it now. You and I are also probably two of the only college football players I know that work in blockchain. I'm sure there's more of us out there, but I don't know them. So I, don't, I, I haven't met anyone. I, I, there's people out there that I think could have played college football, like guys like Alex Lynn from Shima. He's, he's a big <laughs> dude, but I don't know anyone else that played college ball. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. And you and I knew each other, I think, for probably a, a year and a half before we even knew that about each other, because we're just literally talking about, you know, cryptography and, you know, smart contracts and uh, in-game assets and NFTs. So it's, yeah, yeah. that's fun. I think I found that out about you about like six or seven months ago. And we've known each other since like 2017 or 2018. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, funny stuff. But that's, I guess, that's the way it should be. You know, we're here, yeah. we're here talking about the real stuff, which, which we're going to be talking about today. So I think, as a start, uh, I'll, I'll go with the first question, and then you know, Sydney and I are going to take turns, you know, throwing curveballs at you. But no, just kidding. Um, no, don't uh, matter. I think, I I think first and foremost, I think people want to hear, like, tell us a little bit about your background. How did you get into the space? Yeah. So it's you know. I got into blockchain early on. It's kind of a funny story because, you know, I was building game studios, uh, worked with Chris Cross, the creator of Medal of Honor, head of THQ and Nexon. And him and I built the first influencer gaming company. Um, you know, I'd sold that company. We built another studio. We're working together again. Um, and I was wanting to ask my wife to marry me. Um, and I ended up like saying like well, all my money was going into this new studio. And I was like, well, I'm going to put a thousand dollars into crypto, you know, very speculative, whatever I make. I'm going to put on a ring. And within like three months, I flipped into like 50 grand, bought my wife a wedding ring. I, I my partner's like, put, put some of that money into the company. I was like, no, nope, I've said whatever I make goes to this ring. So now my wife has an ultimate gaudy ring on her hand, but I was forever in love with crypto because it made the woman I love say yes. So uh, <laughs> that's how I got in. So, you know, I hope you got the ring insured right away too. Cause that's yeah. one you want to like, you know, lose. Um. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, really the, the catalyst in my head was Fortnite, was when I really thought gaming could be a part of blockchain. Um, Fortnite was the first ever game to be free to play on console. You know, we had free to play around the world and it was dominant, but the U.S. is a leader in what is going to happen next. Um, and with Fortnite being the first free to play console game, I really believe there could be um, a token model that was, you know, interoperable or, or, you know, scalable across all different video games. And, um, you know, I thought cryptocurrency was a, a, a solid answer for that. Awesome. Um, go ahead, Sydney. I think Sydney has some questions about yeah. you know, and God's so, Amendment. So can you break down for us exactly what God's Amendment is exactly? We know that Pocketful of Quarters is the publisher of God's Amendment, but can you mm -hmm. maybe... Get into yeah, so God, yeah, Gods of Men is, you know, it's kind of like just one of these brainchilds that I've always wanted to build. I'm a huge history buff. My first degree was in history. Uh, my favorite time, of, favorite thing in history is Greek mythology. And I just thought it was such a, a solid use case for building out a narrative um, and story play into an NFT, in, in, into an NFT game. So the idea of, of Gods of Men is, you know, the world was, you know, populated by humans. So you start out as a human, you can then go in and uh, win God cards like Zeus and, 
And then those gods then either breed or train with uh, humans and create demigods and monsters. And um, so then you can like go on to have like campaigns. Um, so like you might be at the bottle of Thermopylae of 300. You might be, uh, you know, doing different things in the Colosseum, which is a little bit more Roman, but, you know, they wanted to add that in. Um, so, you know, there's all these different things you go through Hercules trials. So there's one on one games, there's activities, there's campaign modes, um, and it's all cultivated around this breeding mechanism and these items from uh, deities and heroes like Medusa's head. Um, all these are added on pieces that allow you to beat campaigns or join in and, and you know, kind of do like raid battles like Pokemon Go style. Um, so you might go and fight Zeus. You might go and fight Hades, but you can't beat him by yourself. You need to you need to jump in with a bunch of people, and so that that is essentially the the premise of, of Gods and Men. Very cool. And do you see the collection expanding beyond just Greek mythology one day? Yeah, yeah. So I think um, the next expansion pack, of course, is going to be like hero, uh, heroes, monsters, um, and gods. Then the the following expansion pack would go into like. Chinese mythology, um, Norse mythology. So really think of like God of War, right? They, they move straight into like Norse mythology and other things. We can create Titans. We can go into Aztec mythology. There's uh, there's all different places that we could touch, um, you know, and it's really kind of cool because when you really study the root of these different historical mythologies, they all have very similar stories and structures. Um, it's kind of like going into like ancient aliens. If you ever watched that show, you know, they all have very similar structures and like like everyone has a, a epic flood that happened about 10,000 years ago. You know, those are all pieces of all mythologies. Um, and so, you know, I think the way we're going to tie them together is going to be really cool. Um, and, you know, each piece has their own their own values and their own structures based on those those ideologies. Awesome. Um, hey, so can you tell us a little bit more about POQ? Because I feel like that's an in itself, I mean, you touch a little bit about this of of how you you know got into blockchain, but I think people listening, it's really worth learning more about POQ as well because this is the first of many game, well, many POQ games that will go on scale. But you've already have a ton of games and a lot of things that you're you guys yeah. do. So POQ, um, you know, I like to look at us as like the grassroots uh, starter of the blockchain gaming movement, really. You know, we had the first ever SEC no action letter. We created the first custodial wallet, helped create uh, Matic Polygon. You know, Janty Kunani was our first developer. Um, and, you know, the really the, the, the need of a layer two was out of necessity when I was getting in arguments with them saying that no one's going to spend 99 cents on their tokens and 99 cents on an Ethereum gas fee. Um, and that triggered, you know, Janty to go off and build Polygon. Uh, you know, what we do is we essentially create non-speculative tokens that operate on the blockchain um, that replace in-app currency. So video game publishers can create their own Roblox effect. Um, so imagine a world where EA has one token for all their games or one token for all their Madden games or all their Battlefront games. Well, that interoperability and the ability to have closed loop economies is advantageous for players and developers, both in retention, cross-marketing, and the fact that there's no tariffs going from one game to the to the next. Right now, the cost from changing games is 100%, right? You lose everything you've, you've bought, you lose everything that you have. Um, and the idea that we've done is, you know, we've gone out, we worked with the SEC to build a compliant model. Um, we then went out and got credit card processing, which is almost impossible in video games and is impossible in, uh, you know, in the crypto world. It's very, very hard. And so we were one of the first ones to do that. And we started tying all these pieces together. We became the first Unity partner um, and still today, the only Unity partner for blockchain. So, you know, plug and play. If you want to build on scale, you grab our SDK, you plug it in, you pick scale as the chain of choice, and then boom, you're building a game on scale and you need no blockchain expertise to do it. That's awesome. Yeah, because I think <clears throat> I think a lot of people that, especially they listen listeners to the Infinite Chains podcast, um, they're very aware of the UX issue with, from a user perspective, right? You know, UX of doing blockchain is, you know, whether you're playing a game or using a Web3 application or using a DEX, but there's also a developer UX issue. And I think so you're really, not only are you helping the user side and the user's liquidity across platforms and uh, providing like really a, a legitimate state uh, SEC 
approved stable coin for gaming, you're, you know, providing a, a dev experience for easy up and go with Unity, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just literally, you know, we we like to say that in a world where this is in a work is one that it's allowed by distributors. So it has to be accepted in Apple, Google, Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, Epic Store. We, we've been able to cover that because of the SEC no action letter. And the second thing is the world is limited right now with blockchain developers. How easy can we make the fundamentals of board, onboarding new games to blockchain? Um, and how can we make that e the easiest possible solution? So by working with Unity and working with Unreal to create SDKs that you really need no blockchain experience or any kind of engineering uh, know-how on the blockchain. So no Solidity devs, none of that. We take care of it, all of it for you. If you plug this in, you can say goodbye to servers and hello to fractional nodes on scale. It's pretty simple. Awesome. Really cool. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, you know, one of the reasons we're so excited about partnering together is one, just, you know, we think this game is kick ass. I just love it. Um, it's fun. It's like, a you know, quality game that's also a blockchain game. There's a lot of blockchain games that aren't that great. Yeah. But do a good job with the like incentive component. And I think you guys have a, you know, very awesome, well-rounded approach along with really cool art. But, um, but just the things you're doing more broadly, I think it's just thoughtful and it's, it's, it's future, you know, future facing. Cause there's a lot of people I think that are, you know, they're not thinking about the next step. Yeah. I think a lot of people look straight into speculation, straight into how can we create a token in our game and didn't think about distribution, didn't think about user adoption. Um, and that's, you know, that's, those are the pieces that we're trying to figure out and, and get, get right the first time. Yep. Awesome. Um, so, uh, so go ahead, Sydney, any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to ask, what do you believe are the advantages of blockchain gaming versus just traditional games? Well, I mean, so it's interoperability is the first piece, you know, um, being able to take a token or a digital item from one place to another to transfer ownerships or digital rights management systems, whether they be speculative or non-speculative, I think is, you know, not really the point. It's how do you make games advantageous while removing paywalls? Blockchain removes walls. Um, by no longer being on a server and moving to a chain or to a node, it's kind of like, in my opinion, the, the same, same thing that Henry Ford did for the assembly line, right? We moved from a stationary position to a conveyor belt, right? These games are moving from A to B to C to D to E, and they're ever evolving. Um, blockchain allows that movement. It, it allows the flow of, of freedom of tokenomics. And when you add that to gaming, it's advantageous. It's like going from a gift card that's only accepted in store one to a Visa credit card that's accepted everywhere. There's a, That was a massive change in our economy. And when you can add that to gaming, you're going to see a massive change. That's why they say, you know, the metaverse is worth, you know, eight to 10 times what gaming is today. Well, gaming is already worth $200 billion dollars. Now you're talking about a trillion dollar industry. That'd be the largest industry in the world almost. That's that's massive. And that potential is there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, which I think that's a good segue into the next piece. Like what what are your thoughts? Like where do you see blockchain ga gaming going? And it actually might even be good too and helpful for people listening today. Like where is it today? Maybe give us a quick status update of where you see it today and, and then where is it going? Yeah. So let me start at the where it is today and where I think it's going. So, you know, today I think we're we're evolving out of this stagnant NFT speculation, the Axie Infinities of the world. Um, and we're moving into digital rights management. We're moving into um, you know, really these bigger players understanding how to like, you know, consume uh digital rights and and how that would work for them. So like imagine we're Madden, you know, might be able to transfer digital ownership from one player to another. They might be able to transfer a player from FIFA 2022 to 2023. Um, that could all be done through the blockchain. So the first step we have to look at is what they're doing now, and that's cross-marketing. How do they take a game from here and a player from here and move them to here? So, you know, talking to like major publishers like Tilting Point and everyone else, you know, they're looking at ways to, to one, uh, be able to fix IDFA. Um, and if you don't know what that is, that's basically what Apple removed 
Um, so no longer Unity ads or Apple ads. They don't monetize for for video games anymore. So how do you how do you re-monetize these players on these free-to-play style games? Secondly, mm -hmm. is retention. How do you how do you make games more fun without having larger barriers to entry? So you know, I think the Axie Infinities of the world. Those are, you know, have major barriers of entry. You know, you have to pay $200 to get your first Axie. And then there's only so many Axies available. And, you know, you're basically playing a game that costs, I could recreate for about $2,000, you know, but the barrier to entry to go into like an EA game that might've cost 300 million is like $60. So it doesn't make sense um, in the mindset. So I think we're moving into this world where you're going to start seeing digital rights management used. And by digital rights management, I mean NFTs used to create higher retention models and better uh, monetization loops. Um, and then I also think we're going to see token models, not not speculative token models, but token models that sit on blockchain, what we do at POQ. Because um, I think that's going to be the first step in uh, this Web 2.5 to getting uh, distributors to allow uh, blockchain into, into those markets. Awesome. Um, you know, one question, follow-on question there is, uh, I feel like uh, in gaming, a lot of blockchain gaming has really kind of been like only digital rights management and there's the less of the gameplay is actually happening on chain. What's your perspective on more gameplay, like trustless gameplay coming in, uh, in addition to the, you know, the asset ownership and kind of like, uh, I would say unlock liquidity or like interoperability. Yeah, um, you know, I, I want to make sure that we're, you know, as a person that comes from the gaming industry, and I've been in the industry for a decade before I was in blockchain, mm -hmm. we're not chasing cloud computing, right? I don't want to, I don't want to chase cloud gaming. I, I don't know if that's the right answer um, overall, right? Because no one's really been able to figure that out on mm -hmm. a on a wavelength that makes the most sense for players. I think what makes the most sense for players is how do we make games fun again? Um, how do you how do you take games and like you're saying make the and it, it still always come, is going to come back to transactional. How do you make the games monetize during gameplay? So like a, a in game action causes a real world transaction. That's yeah. that's the value add, right? If I struck you, Jack, in a MOBA and I fractionalized the penny from your account and moved it to my account, and then the the developer you know scraped ten percent for their for their putting us both in that game. That's the next future way of gaming. It, it's it's like almost like your lifeblood is your game. Imagine when you were playing Sonic back in the 90s, you drop your tokens and those are real tokens. You're dropping, yeah. you need to collect them all. You know, it'd be almost like, you know, you dropped a $10 bill on the ground, walking out of Walmart, you dive at it. it it's the same the same aspects. Yeah, and, and that's why I think, I no, I don't think every single compute action is going to be on chain at all. Like there's just, it'd be, but I feel like all of the compute actions or logic computations that really impact money, um, if those can be like interject, like injected into a smart contract and more of that play gets integrated into like on-chain events, then, you know, it's not like I'm just trusting the developer or trusting, you know, because really games are oracles. A lot of games right now are just purely, there's a web two piece that's an oracle that tells the blockchain send money to A to B. Imagine if more of that processing was on chain. I just feel like, um, you know, there's just a greater sense of like interaction and engagement. And, and it's like, you know, the most simple version I'd like to talk about is just poker. If you're playing poker, well, you can get all that game logic super easily, you know, the math uh, for the the deal and who beats whom on, on a blockchain. And you're just 100% 100, 100 on chain gameplay. Now, if you're playing like a, sonic and you know there's not going to be every single move is going to be on chain but when they're dropping tokens someone's picking them up or if there's a, a logic that says hey here's how this manner i think i think that stuff's also really interesting but um there's because you know i bring this up because there's so many so many values blockchain provides to gaming right yeah well, I mean, what you're talking about is like design metrics and, you know, mm -hmm. evolving the, the basically the AI evolving, um, you know, everything about how a gameplay mechanics work. Um, you know, we work, we work directly with Unity, um, you know, and Unity is making a big push into Web3. And I think what you're talking about is going to happen. 
I think you're you're basically saying like blockchain will be the lifeblood of uh, of video games as a whole. And I, I agree because I think right now there's such a massive demand of server uh, computation that the servers just can't handle it. And that's why you'll see games drop. Um, you'll see lags. You'll see so much um, happening. Like imagine when, when Call of Duty first came out, Modern Warfare 2, like it was it was terrible. Like you, if you were playing in the first week, the lag was ridiculous. But if you can remove half of the, the metadata off of the server, and like I said, this conveyor belt, this ever moving uh, liquid, that, that is what I, I look at blockchain as, is like a movable liquid. Um, you can essentially create, you know, infinite lag, like no lag time. It, it would be infinite forever. Um, you could create gameplay that would happen uh, in real time versus computer AI. So a lot of people don't realize that when you're playing online multiplayers, and I think this is a little bit what you're getting at, um, that's actually an AI. Um, the computer is trying to guess what you would do if you would hit somebody. Um, if you, like, Let's say we were playing a first-person shooter and I shot at you in an online multiplayer. The AI is trying to determine would I have actually hit you based on my past gameplay, best, based on you know other players that are at my equivalent level, all these different things. And then it, then it, it runs through those, those computations and then sends it. Well, those computations, as you're as you're alluding to, could be moved to the blockchain. They could happen more freely. They could be more robust. They could be a lot faster. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things that could be moved. Yeah, awesome, uh, great. Um, I think Sydney's got one more question about yeah, and then we're gonna roll into the last piece. Yeah. So, um, why did you partner with Scale? <laughs> you know, um, Scale Scale's great because Scale to me. Uh, the fractional notability is so important to, to indie double A's and triple A developers. You know, I, I keep talking about these individual like economies, right? I look at, at each video game like its own country, its own, its own um, small economy. And to be able to fractionalize a node that can then, you know, handle computations, I could piece those together. I could roll up another node. I can roll up a piece of a node. I can use what I want. So I look at very much like like cloud computing meets server computing again liquid right it, it's able to handle as much as i need when i need it when i need it um but also can be as little as i need let's say i'm an indie developer i don't need a lot i only have a couple thousand players on my game you know scale gives me the the ability to be able to handle that so um it, it may not be the example you guys like but i like to compare scale to like uh like a GoDaddy or a SiteGround or a bluehost where maybe i'm not a you know a big website but I'm a website that needs its own space and needs its own time and uh, needs to be able to still have enough speed that SEO works. And I feel like scale is the only answer on blockchain that can do that for the masses, right? By fractionalizing nodes and creating computations that are, are simplistic in nature so that the speed of transaction is still there, uh, you know, there's no one else that does that. So that's why we partnered with scale. Awesome. Awesome. We, well, hey, we appreciate those kind words and and um, and are also, as I said, very, very excited to be partnering with you. And so last piece here, where can people find out more? Where can they join the community? Where can they, what do they need to do to like to play and know about the upcoming launch? Yeah, so of godsamen.io, really simple. Um, go to the website, check it out. You can join us on uh, either of our Discord, Pocket Flow Quarters or of Gods and Men. Um, you know, we we have all these places you can find it, but right now I'm of God's Amanda Aya, join the whitelist, um, get free access to to the token drop and you know, get to playing. Awesome. Really cool. Sydney, any any last thoughts? No, just thank you so much for being on the show today. Of course. I'm glad you had me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Tim, it was it was fun. All right. Let's let's go do this. This launch is gonna be a blast. Um, I'm pumped to play. I want to lock in like, you know, my, my warrior. Um, I love the art. You got some cool stuff. So yeah. excited, excited for that. Perfect. Looking forward to it guys. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate it. Have a great, great day. Bye.